Welcome back to Aqua Exposure Underwater Photography. I'm Christopher Guglielmo, and this is what I do. Hi folks, it's Christopher Goog again. Welcome back. Today I want to discuss something that's been very near and dear to my heart for quite a long time now. Back a few years ago, we saw the transition between film and digital, and every underwater image maker had to make that decision. Do I stay with film? Do I move into the new technology? Well, today we're faced with a new dilemma, and that is video versus SLR. And today, we don't have to choose anymore. The greatest new advance in underwater image making in the past decade is SLRs that can shoot high definition video. In this session, I'm going to explain techniques and tricks on how to shoot the best quality high definition underwater video through your SLR possible. Both Nikon and Canon have made big strides in figuring out how to work this technology into these little units. But uh, whereas the Canon 5D Mark II might be the king right now, I'm using the Nikon D90. So everything I'm talking about in this session is going to be regarding the D90. Now, the best thing we've got going for us here is unlike the video cameras, we've got the ability to change out lenses. Now, you can use the macro lenses with difficulty. You can use the medium range lenses. But what I'm most excited about is the ability to use a fisheye lens. In my case, I've got the Tokina 10 to 17 on here. Before this technology, if you wanted to put this type of lens on a video camera, you were talking a lens set up in the range of fifty to $100,000. Now, for less than $600, you can put a lens on this baby, shoot ultra-wide fisheye lens to get an awesome cinematic effect that was previously totally unachievable. The rules of underwater videography still apply. So before we get into the nitty gritty about this, underwater videography 101, back to the basics. First rule. Just like in underwater still photography, zoom with your fins, not with your lens. The last thing you want to do is shoot underwater video from this distance away. All you're going to do is create a nasty blue haze between you and the subject and lose all the definition and clarity. You want to be shooting from here, much nicer quality video. Second thing, different than underwater photography, underwater videography, most of the time we put the sun at our back. If you put the sun at your back, you're going to get more ambient light shining on that subject. Third thing, underwater videography in very shallow conditions tends to look much, much nicer. You've got more natural sunlight falling on the subject, much more crisp, clear definition, and much better colors altogether. Okay, welcome inside to my little home office on my boat in Papua New Guinea. First things first, turn on your live view on the back of your camera. There's our live view. You notice two things first. One, I've got my grid lines set up. I like those grid lines. Help me keep the horizontal horizons just right. Very important in shooting video, I think. Second thing is inside the menu, let's make sure under the little camera on the side, all the way down to movie settings. This is in the shooting menu. We have movie settings set to the highest possible resolution. Why would you shoot anything but the highest possible resolution? Don't even give me the excuse of saving space on a memory card. I mean, come on, look. A 16 gigabyte memory card costs $30 nowadays. Get the biggest one possible. Shoot at the highest resolution possible, well, it's, whether it's still photos or video, and you'll be much happier in the long run. But also, under the menu, we're going to go over to one step that way, down to the little pencil menu, which is the custom setting menu, and item number D. Two is the viewfinder grid display. Turn that on. Now, because we can't actually dynamically autofocus while we're shooting the video, we have to preset a focus before we ever start shooting. Essentially, that's kind of like manual focusing, but really, you want to keep your camera set to autofocus. Okay, so if the focus is locked on in my face, it's not going to change again until I retap the shutter button. So I'm going to hit the start button, the OK button, and actually it's going to start recording the video clip right now. You see the flashing red up in the top. Now the problem with this is going to be that if I move closer or further away, it's going to fall out of focus. And that's one of the biggest challenges of this. Everything has to stay an approximate single distance away. Now, the beauty of using a wide angle lens like this Tokina 10 to 17 fisheye is that it has an incredible depth of field. Now, with that, we get lots of things in focus. 
Here you see that the leather coral is perfectly in focus, and look at the kid coming down from his canoe. The kid is in focus all the way from the canoe down to the leather coral. That's the awesome power of using a fisheye lens. The depth of field is phenomenal. Now, in sharp contrast to that, this little damn scorpion fish shot with a Nikon 105 lens. His eyeball is in focus, because the eyeball is all that matters, but look how shallow the depth of field is. Watch what happens when he moves. You're about to lose focus. Watch, he's going to move a millimeter. And see, the eyeball's out of focus. Macro is so damn hard for shooting underwater videography with an SLR. Now, here's me shooting it. Look how much I'm struggling. Wouldn't it be easier with a real video camera with uh, an external monitor so I'm not cramming my face into the sand? Now, like I mentioned out on the beach, the exposure that comes out of these cameras is a little bit too bright in my opinion. So I've done two things to help darken up the exposure right from the start. Now, of course, you can do this in post-production inside your video editing software, but why not get it right straight from the camera, right? So, first things first. On the back of the D90, if you hold down the play button, then you can hit down, 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 down. And you see right here, you get a little tiny bar graph that shows just manual exposure. That's gonna darken up the exposure for you a little bit, but quite honestly, it's not enough. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is up on the top of the camera by the shutter, you've got your EV control. Hold down the EV control, and then through the back of the screen, you can see right here, it says zero. Dial in minus one. Minus 0.7 works, minus 0.3 works, minus 1.3, all those work. I find that one is just about the right thing, darkening it by one f-stop in camera speak. Now, by contrast, look at this shot. Overexposed, washed out. This is what happens when you use the default settings on the Nikon D90. It's just too bright, too washed out, and you have no contrast. By taking that EV and lowering it to minus one, you create the nice, rich, saturated image we need. All right, let me pause the camera for just a second here. There's a phenomenon due to the limitations of technology in the current state of cameras that causes a nasty chopping blocks of exposure drops. Watch what happens as we start up again. Darker, 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 darker. It's not a nice smooth gradation like you'd get out of a real good video camera. The SLRs have very limited range for tolerating exposure. Watch, see there, it gets lighter, lighter, lighter in blocks. It's actually kind of annoying, and in this day and age, it is just a limitation of our technology. In this clip, you can kind of see the same problem, but it's not nearly as noticeable because I'm not leaning the camera up and then leaning the camera down. I'm not changing the overall exposure of the background by, by, by aiming towards a lighter source or a darker source. By keeping it relatively levelish on the same color of background, it minimizes the problem. Now, in traditional underwater videography, You've got to add some red back to the color because after you go about 15 feet down, the whole world appears blue and gray like every diver knows, right? So we accomplished that by one of two means, either a red filter or video lights. As one manufacturer, Eichelite, with their DS-161 strobes have come up with a nifty solution. Video lights built into the middle of the strobes. Not a bad idea. If you're close enough, you can add just that little kiss of light that's just right to fill in maybe your own body shadow like in that shot, or illuminate the inside of a cave. Now, the trick is in most shots, these lights are realistically only effective to about 12 inches maximum. Don't try to push it any further than that. Here's a real close-up shot that I used as an example. No lights on this shot, and with lights on this shot. Pretty dramatic difference, huh? I think it makes a, a very nice effect. Okay, folks, that should be enough to get you started, I think. If you want to learn from one of my mistakes, when you first start doing this, don't switch back and forth between underwater stills and then underwater video. If you keep switching modes underwater, here's what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself forgetting all the settings, forgetting to change that EV setting that's so essential to creating the right blues. You're just going to kind of get scatterbrained. So my recommendation, your next three, four, five, six dives, just focus on underwater videography. Forget about the stills for just a short while. It's a small sacrifice to pay if you want to really eliminate that learning curve. So, 
that's about all the advice I have for you guys. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email if you have any more questions. And uh, until then, I'm Christopher Guglielmo. You're watching Aqua Exposure Underwater Photography Education.